how do I put the brakes on early self-disclosure? And the, there was this, I grabbed this as kind of a, out of a whole several paragraphs of, of question. Um, they went through all this lengthy explanation about, you know, you know, the person wanted to, to, to talk and wanted to tell their story. So I'm going to answer this, and, and my answer may not satisfy very many people, but I think it's important to kind of get an understanding of what you're looking at with this. You have clients that are in a state of sympathetic dominance. They're in a state of arousal. Their body hasn't been relaxed completely in a long time. And one of the natural things that they have done, and this is more common if they've been to therapy before, is that how they've bonded with prior therapists is through their awful, horrible story. And so that's what they expect. They expect to come in and tell their story. You are going to have, you're going to engage with them and they're going to have a relationship with you. But that relationship, because of the way it starts, is negative for them. It actually limits them. Let me give you a single example of the limitations of that. There are many others, but I'm not going to go through a bunch of them. So you bond with your client over their horrible story. As they begin to make progress then, as they become stronger and more competent, they're going to get to a place where if I get any better, I'm going to threaten this relationship with the therapist. And so you, you will have this experience. If you've been working clinically, you'll probably have this experience many times where you, they've just seemed to hit a wall and don't seem to be able to go any further. When that happens, go back and look. Did I bond with them through their, through their painful story? And I would imagine that most of the time you're going to find that that's the case. It's either that or you're moving them too quickly. Those are the two reasons that people hit a wall. So... We don't want to bond with clients through their painful story at all. We want to bond with people through their competency, through their potential, through their capacities. Why? Because now as they improve, the relationship deepens. As they improve, the relationship is even more sustaining for them. And that is really what we need to do. Now, a lot of people that I talk to when I, when I do workshops or I've gone and talked to college classes or, you know, presentation to schools or school teachers or uh, first responders or lots of other folks, they, they want to talk about, well, don't you think the person needs to be able to have that? They, they want to tell you their story when they first come in. And don't you think you're not being, you're not having enough empathy? Empathy needs to be redefined. In our culture, empathy is often considered connecting with the pain and misery of another human being. And if that's your, if that's your definition of empathy, it's a very poor definition. It's not a very clinically useful definition. So if I can, I'd like to redefine empathy for you. Empathy is, a, is based on our understanding of how human beings work and you can't have that without a good, thorough knowledge of their physiology. And the next part of it is that you have a tolerance for human beings being human. And, and maybe even if you wanting to add a little oomph to that, you might say, and you enjoy their humanness. But empathy that is so narrowly defined that it is only connecting to people's pain underserves your client. It puts you at risk for chronic overwhelm in your own work, and it's going to lead to your burnout and to your overwhelm, and that's not, a good, that's not good for your client. Will your client want to tell you the story? Quite often they want to, but that's when you have to have good boundaries. Another aspect of this, which is problematic, um, I was talking to a group of folks that are out of the country, and they and 
the person said to me, well, if, if I don't let them tell their story, they won't like me. And I said, they may not like you, but they might respect you. And, but all my peers, you know, get into it right in the first, right into the first session. And how many of your peers are doing trauma work and being successful at trauma work? So yes, emotionally, we might be immature enough that we want to connect with these people because we've been told that's what we need to do to be a good therapist. The reality is connecting to their pain is a bad thing to do if we're going to help them move through it. This isn't like being, you know, connecting to your family member that's going through pain and you're sharing the experience with them. This is a person that's seeking you out to help them get through these moments. And you will get, they'll get through it a whole lot better if you go into the material that is their darkest after they have had adequate preparation and foundation. And you know that before you ever start talking about that, that they can tolerate it without becoming overwhelmed. Again, it's very similar to one of the questions I answered earlier. So how do you put the brakes on? You have to do that by practicing good professional boundaries. How do you put the brakes on? By understanding the process. How do you put the brakes on? By understanding physiology and the neuroscience and what's going on in the body of your client. How do you put the brakes on? By disciplining yourself and not becoming reactive. So those are, those are my answers to that question.